Have a nice evening and welcome to this beautiful Museumsquartier. Thank you, Herr Kessen, for having us. Welcome, Hans Christoph Greimpang, CEO of Felix Schiller. Thank you for being here. Welcome, Brigitte Norman, who represents the Lady Memories today. And welcome, you photographers, to the Felix Schiller Award 2023 and to the German Peace Prize for Photography. And this is particularly important and special time in a special year, the anniversary year of the city of Osnabrück, 375 years of peace in Osnabrück, a piece of Australia. I'm so happy that we can be here together today because the last time we met, it was just a very small circle and it was just a virtual meeting. Of course, it was a special situation at that time because it was a pandemic time. This also was especially so for photographers because there was no traveling, there was no social and cultural life. It's just, well, yeah, it did continue in a way. Life had to go on somehow, but it was under difficult conditions. And uh, and the photographers from all over the world showed us this. I saw uh, very interesting photographs from empty streets, from empty uh, theaters. And I saw how the animals and the plants went back to public places. Uh, the container camps in China were Corona. Uh, people, Chinese people from were locked in when they were had Corona. And this is these conflicts and these breaks is what photographers can show. They don't just show the Chinese surface because it's boring unless you want to show something that is behind this, these cracks. This is what they show, what they present to us, these cracks. And these cracks is what makes our world so special. And what is so spe special here is that uh, all these photographies are highly aesthetic because you see such a beautiful image that shows something that is not really beautiful. This is what only art can do. And this is why I'm so happy that we're here together in the museum's quartier. And that's why I would like to ask the head of this place to the stage, that's Nils Arne Kessens, who would like to welcome you himself. So, dear Mr. Neumann, dear Mr. Gallenkamp, dear uh, uh, team of Felix Schiller, employees of Felix Schiller, dear jury members, uh, also, as a representative, uh, Sir Danemann, as the head of the jury, dear town councillors, uh, dear Patricia Mersinger, and above all, dear phot photographers, dear guests here who uh, physically, and also those of you in front of the uh, video screen, in the Museum of Cultural History, I would like to welcome you here very, very warmly uh, to the awards of the Felix Schiller Photo Competition and the German Peace Prize for Photographer. Uh, Ms. Backhaus has already said, unfortunately, our Lady Mayor, Mrs. Butter, cannot be with us this evening. Uh, that's a great pity, and I hope uh, that she will get better soon. I send her my very best wishes at this point, but I'm delighted that Brigitte Neumann, a member of the uh, Town Council of Osnabrück, was so uh, spontaneous and able to come here this evening uh, as a representative. Um, for me, it is always something rather special um, to uh, that these high class prizes of international dimension are awarded here in the museum in Osnabrück and that we can then uh, present the nominated and award winning photographs to the public here in an exhibition. I'd like to thank Hans Christoph Gallenkopf and uh, Schiller also for the very good collaboration and for everything that you have done to allow us to uh, present these ex exquisite photographs here in this museum. Peace is much quieter than violence. These words by the photographer Shirin Abidi 
who won the 2021 Young Talent Award, came back to my mind as I was preparing for this evening. All the more so uh, because this year's award ceremony is taking place in the 375th anniversary year of the Peace of Westphalia, while at the same time, the topic of war has come so much closer to us than uh, we have experienced for a long time. My hope remains that the photographs will speak all the louder of togetherness and peace. And I am delighted that the Museum Quartier is once again uh, purchasing uh, the works of the nominees and award winners of the German Peace Prize for Photography, and that we can thus continue to build up a collection that is unique worldwide. Thank you very much indeed, and I wish you all an inspiring evening. Thank you very much, Jutana Kessens, and thank you that we can be here in the Museum of Cultural History in Osnabrück. As you can see, we are surrounded by images by Nussbaum, I think, from the past, and sometimes the view, look at in the past helps uh, us in the present. And I think Søren Kierkegaard once said, uh, you can live forward, but you can only understand backwards. And in this sense, it's particularly important that we celebrate the and look at the anniversary of the Peace of Westphalia. It's important that we have to remember 375 years ago, um, the, the war parties who had these big and many conflicts and they overcame them. And here they shook hands, here in Osnabrück, they shook hands again. So, and what can we learn from this today? I know this is a very extensive program here on this topic in Osnabrück, and I know uh, one question is, what can we learn from this? And in this context, uh, Kassin said it, the peace, German Peace Prize for Photography is also an important part and plays an important role, and especially in this year. And that's why I'm very happy that Birgitte Neumann, you are here today as a member of the Council of the Peace City Osnabrück, and that can tell us something about this. Welcome here, Brigitte Neumann. Dear uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gallenkamp, dear Mr. Schwarzkopf, dear Mr. Kessens, dear members of the jury and a very especially dear photographers uh, dear mrs mersinger and dear colleagues from the town council ladies and gentlemen it is a great honor for me to be able to welcome you here today on this very special occasion of the presentation of the German Peace Prize for Photography and the Felix Schiller Photo Award. Photos do not prevent any cri crises and they do not uh, conclude wars, but they have the power to sharpen our perception, to widen our view of the world and to change our attitudes. They make us uncomfortable in the role of mere observers, and they challenge us to be open to their effects and to be touched in the very best way. I am completely convinced that this also applies to the photos that the jury has selected for awards this year, because the German Peace Award for Photography, ever since the beginning, stands for attentive, often critical views of the world, for photos that reveal truths and tell unexpected and uncomfortable truths from unusual perspectives, for pictures that touch us very deeply and make us think for photographs that 
convey beauty and closeness. We've just talked about that a little bit, despite the hardships they reveal, there is still a beauty which they exude. This uh, orientation attracts world-class photographers as well as outstanding young artists. Uh, later on, we'll be able to see this for ourselves and um, convince us when we see the pictures in real. It is certainly also uh, thanks to its thematically and artistically demanding profile that the German Peace Prize for Photography is one of the most highly recognized international competitions. The photographs which we are presenting as awards this evening offer us a special insight into the world that surrounds us. The settings are sometimes geographically far away from us, but the images we are looking at today show human nature, which is the same all over the world. We, uh, human beings, the same emotions all over the world, the same thoughts, the same worries, and the same joys also. There's a similarity everywhere, whether with us in our country, in Ukraine, in Iran, in some metropolis or out in the countryside. To make this special uh, view possible, we however need the sharp observation of the photographers. They enable us to see what they have seen on the ground. And at the same time, they leave us space to look at their pictures with our own eyes and from our own perspective. The pictures presented here remind us how important it is for us to remember our humanity and support each other in order to create a peaceful and also rather more harmonious world. They show once again, peace cannot be taken for granted, but rather requires active ambas ambassadors, also in art and culture. And you also said this, this is uh, particularly true as Osnabrück this year is celebrating the 350 uh, uh, 75th anniversary of the Peace of Westphalia. And for this, we, I would like to point out that we've put together uh, an impressive program around 200 events, exhibitions, concerts, art in the public sphere, panel discussions, conferences, citizens' actions, young pro youth projects, and even city festivals. I'm very grateful that Osnabrück's lively and experimental cultural scene is helping to carry our city's message of peace out into the world. This evening is definitely, my dear ladies and gentlemen, part of it. And for that, I would like to express my warmest thanks to the team of the Museums Quartier, uh, Mr. Kessens, you in particular, um, uh, as our hosts this evening. Thank you so very much. My sincere thanks also go to all the participants in the German Peace Award for photogra Photography. Uh, please allow me also uh, to express extremely uh, warm thanks to Felix Schiller Company, which has established the Felix Schiller Photo Award, and to Mr. and Mrs. Sexer, who played a major role in initiating the German Peace Award for photographers. This, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gallenkamp, I would like to uh, really express very warm thanks. Thank you so very much. I uh, think uh, particular thanks is also uh, owed to the five members of the jury and the six members of the um, uh, 
special jury for photography because um, you have really worked so hard to select these right photographs. Thank you so much for your huge efforts. All of you play a very big role that Osnabrück is not only a host to outstanding photography, photographic art, but it also exercises cultural commitment in the spirit of the city of peace. For me personally, it is a great uh, joy that with purchasing these uh, photographs, you're able to uh, build up this unique uh, collection of photographs for our city of peace, Osnabrück. And it was wonderful that for the 50th uh, year of our partnership with Gmund in Austria, an uh, uh, exhibition of the winning photographs could be presented there in Gmund. It, was, uh, it attracted a lot of attention. And I think the um, ongoing growth of this collection means the subject of uh, peace is not only being um, propagated here in Osnabrück in Germany, but also right into the world. And uh, this is an important uh, contribution to the spread of peace and understanding. In conclusion now, I would wish that we all have the energy to make uh, the world more peaceful. Uh, some people um, use a camera, some people uh, compose, paint or research. Uh, simply by your presence here and your involvement, we are promoting art and culture in our city and contributing to the spread of peace and understanding. Let us use this evening to be inspired, to engage in conversation and to gain new perspectives. The photographs we see today are not only expressions of talent and creativity, they are also testimonies of hope. I am quite sure about this. Uh, in this spirit, I wish us all an inspiring and insightful evening, and I look forward to admiring the impressive photographers' photographs together with you. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, thank you very much, Neumann, for these friendly words about photography and the functions and the job they have to do and it all sounds a little bit factual but it's what they can do what they perform and i love being here because we really have see such great works and there's such excellent interplay you spoke of perspectives and this is really literally what it's about with photographs that you take perspectives you take the top perspective but eye perspective long short close up and the artists decide what they want. They are responsible for how they want to show us something. They take us along. And then we have our own perspective um, when we look at a photo, because we have our own experiences and our, our own interpretation. This is really an interplay. And this is interesting and fascinating. And today we will, or this evening, we will experience a lot of it much more. And you can see how great it is to see these works. We have sensational works this evening, and, and this award is presented by Felix Scholler. They have been pay, making paper, a specialty paper, for 125 years. It's also a close uh, photographic base paper and digital printing paper, so, so that we can um, display these photographs here and in our houses. And that's why I'm so happy that you're here tonight, the CEO of, the CEO of Felix Scholler, Hans Christoph Gallenbrand. Please say, Hello to everyone. Dear Mrs. Neumann, dear Mr. Kessens, dear Mr. Schwarzkopf, dear nominees here on site at the museum's quartier, as well as those of you connected on the screens, dear jury, dear guests, and dear supporters. It is a very special honor for me this evening uh, to be here and address a few personal words to you on 
Mrs. Neumann already mentioned it in her speech, the Felix Schiller Photo Award and the presentation of the German Peace Prize for Photography are taking place under memorable auspices this year. We are celebrating 375 years of the Peace of Westphalia, and at the same time, we are witnessing an ongoing cold-blooded war of aggression in Europe. Actually, I wanted at this point uh, to tell you something about our social commitment, about our cultural responsibility. And I wanted to tell you about our passion for paper, the carrier of many great photographs. But how do we do that when a topic like war so close to us overshadows everything else? Ladies and gentlemen, allow me, therefore, to share a personal story. Felix Schuller is a family business. My great-great-grandfather was a papermaker. He founded the company because he recognized at the end of the 19th century the huge potential of photography and wanted to instill life into it. Our company history is therefore based on his foresight and also on his dream. It is based on the production of photographic paper. From this history, the Felix Schuller Photo Award has been born. We link our passion for the printed picture with the power of art and the visualized emotions. But we also support the demanding work of professional photographers all over the world. And we encourage and support also young talents. In the current world, which is characterized by conflict and uncertainty, photography can also provide orientation. It directs our gaze to what is essential. Pictures have the power to move us. I could sort of say now, you'll be able to understand exactly what I mean by this uh, context, this meaning, this moving uh, when you see it. They sharpen our awareness of right and wrong. And when I think of the great photographs of our time, they even have the potential to bring about change. Dear guests, at this point, it is especially important to emphasize our involvement in, in view of today's geopolitical situation, uh, we feel is an obligation more than ever. Our company is directly affected by the war in Ukraine. In 2006, we founded a joint venture in Penza a Russian place about 550 kilometers from Moscow. Two of our employees who just a few months ago were colleagues of ours were drafted by the Russian regime and killed in the war. We judge the, uh, we are very critical of how uh, the Russian regime is acting, but we support our employees and our partner business in Russia. And therefore, the Felix Schiller Photo Award and uh, also the awarding of the German Peace Prize for photography is a matter extremely close to our hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, I stood on this stage for the first time in 2019. About one year earlier, I was appointed CEO of Felix Schuller. I represent the fifth generation. And at some point, I would like to pass the company on to the next. As a company, we have asked ourselves in recent months, once again, 
what do we stand for? What contribution do we make in our society? Our answer is paper made for life. We want and we are going to make people's lives better with paper. Felix Schuller and all of us who work for the company believe in the power and durability of paper. That is why, dear nominees, it makes us particularly proud to see your work on our paper. We are delighted that your photos will be on display over the next three months here in the museum's quarter of Osnabrück to be seen by all citizens, uh, by all visitors who want to uh, have a look while they are in this wonderful city. This really wonderful uh, expression of art and of commitment and all wonderful to be seen here in the museum's quarter. Dear jury, dear Michael, Dan and Unman, our sincere thanks once again go to you. We were delighted that the final jury meeting this year and nomination of the top works took place for the first time actually at Felix Schuller. On this day, you showed how wonderful, wonderfully controversial you can discuss individual pictures, how you really burn for photography. For me, it was a great pleasure to follow your conversations and arguments. The photos we will see this evening were taken with a high artistic standard. They were taken in different places, in Iran, in Syria, in Ukraine, in Thailand. As you can see, the Felix Schiller Photo Award was once again this year, a very international award. It's attracted enormous attention from uh, 98 countries all over the world. We have received 2000 entries. Dear nominees, I would like uh, to say this to you here. As great as your photographs are in terms of execution, in their imagery and in their perspectives, you have all one thing in common. You have great passion. For that, you deserve, all of you deserve our unlimited applause. Make sure you keep this passion for photography. Stay courageous. Remain creative in the realization. Continue to enrich and inspire us with your fantastic pictures. Preserve for us and for the next generation the many stories of this world. And you're very welcome, of course, to do it on photo paper of Felix Schuller. Ladies and gentlemen, I know time is short. So to finish, I would like to use this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you in first position to uh, Mr. Kessens and your team, the museum quarter here in Osnabrück, that you uh, uh, have invited us here this evening and are exhibiting the pictures. Thank you to the jury. And thank you also for your commitment in looking at 2000 photos, conducting a pre-selection and then working to find the outstanding award winners. Thank you so much that you uh, accompany us in this way. We have a great esteem for you. Thank you. And uh, also, uh, I would like to thank all photographers that you were prepared to submit your photography and to um, uh, make them open to the um, to the uh, assessment of the jury. And ultimately, I would like to say a very, very warm thanks to all of you 
dear audience, that you are contributing to the special atmosphere of this evening uh, to make it good and special and uh, a good memory for all our photographers. I'm looking forward to a good evening here with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gankamp. So, well, you, you told us a lot about what we want to do in the next uh, in the next point and what we talk about much more. This is the work of the jury of the panel. You said, yes, 2,000 submissions we had from 98 countries. So you can imagine uh, we got a glimpse that this. this was not so easy. And so it's also important, and I also said it before, it's important. Uh, everybody has their own perspective on the work and so it's very important to have a diverse jury and we have a very diverse jury and Michel Dannemann will tell us something about that in a minute. He himself is a photographer and a renowned photographer and he's been shaping this award um, himself and I'm very happy that he heads this jury and he will talk to me about this not easy and emotional work um, with me in a minute. Welcome Michel Dannemann. Michael, I think uh, we have uh, here an overview of the jury. We can see them here all. Maybe you can say something about it. Who are these people? So, of course, first of all, we see uh, six members of the jury. They all six uh, members of the Peace Prize. So, uh, five members, except for Oleg Nekana. No, no. So all of these, they they are they all design and shape the Felix Schiller Photo Award. So Ulrich Schneckner is a professor for international relations at the uh, University of Osnabrück. So he commu always commutes between Brussels and Berlin for his all his work, and he supports us, and that's what I wanted to say. He supports us in the framework of the German Peace Prize with his expertise. Because it's often so difficult if you don't know all these topics so perfectly, because they are sometimes politi highly political, and that's why we need him as a sixth member of the, the jury. Of course, we also have uh, this time. The jury is, is always changes. We always have difficult different people. Patrick Hook from Zurich. She is an art historian and she was the curator at the uh, Vienna Kunsthaus. And she has now, she now works at the uh, Kunsthaus in Zurich with beautiful exhibition. And then, of course, then we have Nils Arne Kessen. You've already met him before. And he's a director of the Museum of Scotland in Osnabrück. Uh, I think he's well known here. He has excellent exhibitions here in 2020. He was awarded the Museum's Prize of the HDS Culture Fund. This is a, an award that is awarded very rarely, I think only every other year. And this really also uh, shows what the museum itself has achieved with all its topics. Then we have Hannah Schuh. Yeah, you can see it here. Hannah Schuh lives in Hamburg. Originally, she, she started out as a photographer and she studied at the Royal Academy of Arts in, in Den Haag many years ago. And she's responsible for, um, for the, uh, as a technical director for the art magazine, one of the key magazines in terms of art. Hannah, I think you join me here on, on stage. For our small jury talk. We've uh, already we've already uh, welcomed you. Uh, Simona Klein from Cologne is an art historian. She worked at Sotheby's, responsible for photography. Then she went to Paris. We can understand the attraction there, and worked for Magnum. Um, this is, uh, she's um, uh, art consultant for photography there. Uh, dear Simona, please uh, come onto the stage. Uh, 
I see Simona, we both here with our silver or oh, shiny shoes, one in silver, one in gold. That's great. Uh, as if we'd uh, decided together on this. But of course, we both come from Cologne, but uh, we didn't talk about this beforehand. So, uh, talking about the uh, wide scope of the uh, jury, perhaps you can say something about the um, applicants, the competitors here. Perhaps you can say something about this. Well, what was really great was the fact that it went right across the different generations uh, with 23 year olds up to the age of 67. Um, this is a terrifically wide range and it makes me very proud as a member of the journey that we have such a broad spectrum of interested photographers uh, over generations. I think this is a wonderful thing. What I'm also very enthusiastic about, I must say here on the microphone, um, uh, what I'm also really pleased about is that we really have artists among us, in addition to photographers, artists who have become involved in photography as a, as a medium where they normally work with painting or sculpting or other forms of art, they've decided to try their hands also at art. So about Philip Junger, I, I, uh, many young uh, artists, uh, we have really had a big selection here. We have photographers participating who are still at the training stage. Um, and so if I look at these works, or when we all were, looked at these works of the young talents, it was incredible. They're, although they were still in training, it was so professional. Uh, they are very, very close to establishing themselves in this professional world. And um, I think uh, during study, normally you go on and develop more and more. So, Hannah, um, you're fairly new and, and young in the jury. You all had a different attitude uh, uh, to the pictures. We've heard that uh, there were some very heated discussions. Uh, perhaps you can tell us a little bit how uh, such a jury meeting goes. Did you have doors slamming? Um, and how, how could we imagine this? We were delighted that there was so much to see that there was such a wide variety, that it had been wonderfully prepared, that we had 25 um, pre-selected uh, pictures, uh, which had been done online, which had been selected online. They were all selected on the tables and we were able to go through the tables. Shilla had prepared this all in a wonderful way for us. Then we had to, um, really start being more specific and we had to put points uh, where do we put our emphasis and that's when the discussions really started. I experienced these discussions as very productive, very passionate of course and uh, we all tried to convince each other of our standpoints. We all looked to see uh, what messages were behind these pictures, uh, what uh, language the photographer had found for transmitting their message. Um, there's also a very special feature about this jury work. I don't know if you're all aware of that. Something very special here is that the pictures are all anonymous. Uh, at the beginning, you didn't know who was uh, behind the pictures, so to speak, either how old the photographers were, what sex they were, we didn't know anything about them. Uh, many of us uh, know something, recognize some things from publications and you, you do recognize um, a lot of, uh, and, and you can recognize uh, aspects like what region of the world they come from. Um, there are a lot of specific details that you can pick up quite uh, spontaneously. Um, but you've been doing this for some time um, and you want to continue doing it anonymously. Um, yeah, certainly it means um, 
we we don't want to know who they're from. We want uh, to know how distinguished they are. We want to go completely openly uh, uh, towards these photographs and uh, make our own decisions. Uh, we don't want to be influenced beforehand. Uh, we don't want it like the Oscars. We just want to look at the pictures and let the pictures speak. And that gives us a certain strength or power to uh, try and uh, see what is behind the pictures. And then, uh, yeah. So did you have a, a, a set, did you recognize a certain key topic uh, this year to say this, um, yeah. Of course, it's clear what is uh, happening in the world and what is um, uh, affecting all of us is, is uh, very much represented in these pictures, the war in the Ukraine, uh, sustainability, environmental problems, many social um, problems uh, we saw. It was really um, a very extreme, extreme diversity very manifold, it was very, very difficult. Uh, we saw many, many different uh, positions and discussed these positions and it was very hard also to eliminate some of the pictures to exclude them. Uh, we tried, really tried to get a, an equal level to a, a sort of an equal level of criteria uh, which we could uh, select, but I'm, I'm very happy with our final selection. I think we actually did it quite well. Uh, actually, uh, what you also wanted to say is that we almost always uh, decided unanimously on the winner. That's quite important to say, almost, not absolutely always, but almost. Of course, we had lots and lots of discussions, but our final decision was virtually always unanimous. Uh, the discussions were sometimes rather long. Uh, we have to say that as well. It wasn't easy. That's uh, nice when it wasn't so easy. So we see how what high quality uh, was there everywhere. Okay. Uh, thank you. We're very pleased. Uh, and we're very excited about seeing these pictures selected by such a highly qualified jury. Thank you very, very much indeed. I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. So now we're going to begin presenting what you've selected. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, now, so who is among the best 20, top 25 among t of 2000? We will see it in a minute. We will award prizes in four categories. This is um, up and coming telling, portrait, sustainability, portrait, uh, photojournalism. Uh, I will um, introduce you to the nominees and afterwards uh, we will show you the images and we will present the award winner. We will start with the first category. This is the category up and coming talent or emerging photographers. Moab Mekdrak Bulhazin from Bangladesh. He's concerned with human rights, with social developments and the environment, all of which is of course connected to each other, especially because of his home country. And this work, he shows the effects of climate change on the people in Bangladesh's coastal regions. Draft uh, is already threatening in, in their existence. For centuries, they have lived in harmony with the sea and the rivers in this region, but the water is receding more and more now. Axel Javier Stolzbacher. He was born in Hanover and he partly grew up in Mexico. And uh, there are more and more children are being recruited by criminal clans. Many of them die in the gang wars. And to save them from this, former soldiers and policemen train the children so they teach them to fight and defend themselves. And later on, they would like them to go to the military or the police and not to the clans. So this is a very special type of social work, I think. <laughs> then there's Lisa Marie Azubonteng. She's Ghanaian German photographer and lives in Berlin. She's portrayed women in Ghana who have experienced sexual violence. 
it's not uncommon in Ghana that young girls are raped and that uh, women are exposed to physical violence, but it's not talked about. So no one addresses this deplorable state of affairs. Neither the women nor the men. Lisa Marin Albert Azabuteng does it by giving a woman a voice, a silent voice, but this can also happen. Nazanin Hafiz was born in Iran, studied in Saarbrücken, and in her work she uh, addresses the oppression of women in Iran. What we see is Laila. She experienced an acid attack by the caretaker of the hospital where she worked. She doesn't know to the date why he attacked her and destroyed her face and, uh, and her life, of course, which now is only at home because she is not she's afraid of going out. And so she must have been very strong to have these photographs taken. Then there's Angelo Leonardo, a photographer for Italy. He accompanied young people from the suburbs of Milan. Milan is the richest city in Italy, but the city and this wells is far away from these people in the suburban areas. They move in their own little world, this little neighborhood, but it belongs to them. And this is their everyday is all about self-expression and about performance. So their principle is exaggeration as self-empowerment. So these were the nominees for the best up and coming talent. I think they deserve our applause. So, you, so the, the, the so you will have to find out what has happened to this. But so Michael Dunnemel will, will come to stage again, and Hans uh, Christoph Kallenkamp also will join him, so that we can say uh, who is the winner of in this category of the Felix Scheller Photo Award 23. So be careful, Mr. Gunn. Follow up here. Don't fall into the image as too expensive. That would have been a very expensive experience. So in the category best newcomer, the winner is Lisa Marie Asubontang with her series, The Holy Woman. The Holy Women. First of all, you stay here, we will get, you have to listen what the jury says. Our jury, dazzled by intense colors, only the second view takes us into the traumatic experiences that these young women and girls had to endure through rape. So Lizzie Marie Azubontong has uh, succeeded in a sensitive photographic approach to address the worst experiences of violence in emotionally touching portraits. In contrast to the cruelty inflicted on the girls and women, the pictures are completely silent and precisely because of that so haunting. The silent looks of, these portray, of those portrayed are a screaming indictment of sexual violence. Lisa Marie Azubontang, applause. Wait. Let's all stand together for to uh, have a photograph. Okay, this is important. And uh, perhaps, uh, as a one you can stand here for a second, and because I would like to find out one or two uh, things about your work, because it's called Holy Women. Why did you choose this title? What was so important for you? So it was important for me. Because the story started because of my uh, cousin survived such an act of violence. And uh, and they were taken when uh, we went to the funeral of my grandmother. And then I really thought about this topic and I didn't only think about my own culture. I also under, tried to understand why women who experience such things, why, why they neglected. And Ghana is, is a very religious country. And so it is so that women who experience it, they, they are called unholy and they are banned uh, or they are forced marriage or maybe they are even 
if the person who did it is in the same place as they may be banned from a place. And this, for me, it was important that we these women uh, can show their own story in these images. This was really key to me. And this is why it's called the holy women. They're not unholy. They're strong, beautiful women, not unholy. Okay, yes, of course, you're absolutely right. There's one more question I'd like to ask because of the uh, uh, basic situation you told us and you talked thought about it. This is a taboo topic in Ghana. Nobody speaks about it, neither the women nor the men. So when you know this, I think it was not easy for the women to have their portrait take, portraits taken. How, uh, how was the photo shoot with them? What are the hopes behind this? For me, it was uh, important. I was there as a person, not as a photographer in the first place, just as a person. And it was important for me. It's not, I, I didn't only see a sister and a sister and a mother and a mother. For me, it's, it was about togetherness and um, being, becoming one group, especially through photography and through talking a lot before we took any photographs, because you have to have that, um, they have to, and their, and their parents have to give you permission to do this. And, and it was a beautiful moment I was able to share with these women, and, and, and the honor of which I had to, to, to share with these people. And there was a point where the camera was invisible, and I even didn't notice the camera when I took the photos. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your work, and we hope that this will change the future as i think it would take a lot of time but that that, pe that women in ghana can live in peace and safety thank you for having taken a first step in this direction thank you lisa marie other bonding best young talent at the felix schiller photo award in 2023 and we just found out how close does a person allow us to come? How close is a, a photographer allowed to come? And this has a lot to do with trust. We heard it. And you can see it in the works. And you can see it in the works of Lisa Marie Azbatang. And portraits are always an intimate thing, although they are often made for public viewing, so to speak. So for the category portrait, I'm winning prediction of photo award. Who has been nominated? Nominees are Dominic Asper, born in Essen, in the rural area, which was to, used to be the largest industrial center, but it was a long time ago. Um, he, he's, the people there are honest and authentic. And this portrait shows some of these uh, originals, these characters of the rural. And in the background, it looks very much like Tristesse, but this is only a background for this self-determined, colorful life in the rural area. Clara Watt from France. She portrays LGBTQ plus people in Ghana who are very extremely discriminated there and oppressed and marginalized. And it's, uh, the, currently there is an uh, anti-LGBTQ bill um, that's just passed. And if it passes, then punishment and violence against them will be legitimized. And Clara shows the beauty and the love and the vulnerability of the LGBTQ people plus people in Ghana with love against hate. Ibrahim Rose comes from Iran. Here he portrays young women in Afghanistan who have not been, uh, since the Taliban took over, they have not been allowed to practice their sport freely. Uh, they are threatened and they remain anonymous because they are a fear of terrorists. They wear their burqa and they only show the equipment they need for their sport they love. The, the ban on playing sports is only one of the many bans. Women in Afghanistan are completely pushed out of public life. Daniel Lemanski, he also works with discrimination. The Polish photographer portrays, portrays Roma children and young people from Eastern Slovakia. They live in very degrading conditions, but they don't know it any other way because they hardly ever get out of their slums. The Roma are one of the most discriminated groups in the EU. Even today, 80% 
of the Roma live below the poverty line, and there are hardly any chances for the children to get out of poverty. Emeke Obanor won the German Peace Prize for Photography last year. This year, he submitted a work about young girls in Nigeria who, who became victims of child trafficking. Unimaginable what they've experienced, forced labor and sexual exploitation. The most beautiful and carefree tale was uh, there. These people was the early childhood from which they usually only have their passport photographies. In the meantime, they've managed to escape and now they're trying to find a new life through education and therapy. These were the nominees. In the part in the category portrait of the Felix Schiller like photo about 2023, Michael Damanan, who will receive the Felix Schiller? So the category of portrait, uh, the winner is Damian Lemansky with his work Kids of Lunai. Yeah, okay. Congratulations. And now the jury uh, would like to make a statement. The series Kids of Lunik 9 tells of the everyday life of Roma children and young people in Eastern Slovakia in strong black and white photographs. The vitality that emanates from Damien Lemansky's portraits is a poignant strength and directness. We are not simply close to what is happening, we become part of it. It is Lemansky's credit that he's able to win the mutual trust of these young people who, because of their stigmatization, would otherwise probably have little interest in putting their difficult lives on display. In these exciting shots, we encounter joie de vivre, creativity, and self-empowerment of people who deserve a more respectful view of their everyday lives than that presented by the mainstream media. Congratulations, Damien Lamansky. Uh, uh, now we take a photo. What moved you? Yeah, to, to take those pictures about the poor children. Yeah, for the first time, my, yeah. my friend brought this place, and I couldn't believe that it's so close to Poland and in the central of Europe, such a place. Even now, people don't believe sometimes that it's in Slovakia. Uh, and when I went the first time I saw this kids, I knew that I will be going back there because they just steal my heart and still my heart is there i've been there like eight times but every visit is heartbreaking uh, so it's hard like i want and it's hard for me to go there because every time i spend there you know i'm crying inside looking at these kids but uh, i'm not just taking pictures i'm also just playing with them at that time, I had long hair, so they were just playing with my hair also. I wanted to know that there are people who are seeing them, yes. that I just wanted to be there for them, with them. Yes. What are the hopes and the dreams? Yes. Yeah. What are the hopes and the dreams? Yes. Yeah. Mm. What are the hopes, the dreams of those young people? Um, because they grew up in total poverty. I, I think it's hard to talk about dreams. Uh, when I ask them, they, like, I heard that they don't like even know how the life could be outside. And they, they were sure that you're in really a good place. Maybe sometimes they were a little bit ashamed, but they, I think they don't think about it that way. 
Uh, they are very playful and smiling, and I love that about them. Uh, I also did some little workshops there. I didn't want to, I didn't want to learn photography, but I just wanted them to have something to do to play with photography. So I was very happy seeing them with cameras that I collected from my friends and even unknown people. And so, so I just wanted to give them a little spark, something else that they could do. Yes, and some hope maybe or something to that do. There is some other life uh, uh, maybe for them out there because it's very hard to get out of, yes. of that place when you get born there and ones can get any job because they are Roma. They want to work, but at the time of the employee, employer, most of the Roma don't want to hire them. Of course, there are also people that are destroying their name, but as everywhere, like Polish and Germany also didn't have a good name. And now I'm here and I'm happy and I'm, I want to thank a lot. I didn't expect that. I didn't think about any speech that because I was sure that the, this uh, this story from Iran so beautiful yeah yes. but it was a very great work and thank you very much for being here today and thank you very much yeah. thank you for having me today and thank you very much thank you for having me thank you Ja, Damian Limanski hat nochmal. Okay, Damian Limanski once again reported what happened with the youngsters and that every time he, he had to cry when he saw them, when he came, when he left, because they were so lovely and nice. And they have no chance to leave poverty because Roma and themselves are even discriminated in the EU. They still discriminate. So thank you very much. Now we'll continue with the next category. The category is a brand new one, of course, and it's sustainability. And we need sustainability. We can't avoid sustainability. Sustainability. Climate protection is a necessity. It comes, it permeates all areas. Also, paper production. Also, Felix Scheller. Felix Scheller. I read. Uh, reuse it water. Try to avoid waste. There's a paper mill. The paper mill is the future, which wants to work climate neutral. That means everybody has to do something. We all have to change. We all have to recognize that this the, the future cannot be like the past, the way we produced and the way we uh, lived. And we have to find solutions. And the work that we see now are concerned with these effects and with solutions in the category sustainability. The nominees are. You from Russia, he shows a landscape in the Arctic, um, which is habitat for many animals. But due to the climate change, it's getting warmer. And spring comes earlier, ice melting, and this means that the animals have to change their behavior. Not all of them can do so. And so if the ice continues to shrink, some of the animals like polar bears, whales, and so on will also disappear. And Yui, I think he is exactly something is happening. What I thought, his images are so beautiful but they show something cruel. Simone Tremonte is Italian, lives in Rome, and she shows what the future could look like. It seems a little bit like science fiction, but it is real. If you want to reach a net zero target uh, for CO2 emissions by 2050, as it has been said by the EU Green Deal, we need innovation and new technologies. And Simone Tremonte shows how many machines can work together to shape the next industrial transformation. For some of it will take some getting used to, but some of it will consider it fascinating. Giacomo Delando is an award-winning photographer from Italy who works intensely on environmental issues. He also shows us an innovative project, Nimus Garden. It's an underwater greenhouse, especially in the regions where it's impossible and increasingly difficult to farm due to climatic conditions. Uh, their underwater farming could be a solution. After all, we're all getting more green people on this planet and somehow they all have to be fed. And this is how it goes. So, Gregor Zayla, Aust the Austrian photographer is dressed very warmly and he also went to the Arctic uh, at up to minus 55 degrees, which is a big challenge for an analog camera. 
He shows the changes in the Arctic uh, uh, and their political and economic impact. Many nations want to secure rights for the new routes that will be opened by the melting ice. Some nations have already positioned themselves along the so-called Polar Silk Road with both military and research stations. Ruben Saldago Escudero comes from Mexico City. We've just seen the technical achievements and they need a lot of electricity. So people who have power have, have electricity of the future. And for some people, solar power is a big change because it's for example, a lot of light. A lot of, some regions have only, uh, have only had electricity for the first time through solar energy. And some of these images are like lit up only through solar energy. So these are the nominees in this category. And please an applause here for all these nominees. And who has the first uh, prize? Uh, Michael Danman is going to tell us this now. So category sustainability. The winner is Simone Tramonte with his work, New Ways to the Future, Simona. So, und auch hierzu gibt's eine Begründung der Jury. Alle I would like to make a statement by the jury. We all hope that uh, technology can help us live more healthily, have cleaner air and reduce emissions in the future. In this work, the cool aesthetics of technozones converge with the organic growth of plants. Nature and technology must be symbiotically brought together to meet the challenges on climate change. The impressive and precise imagery of photographer Simone Tramonte not only takes us into the future, but also formulates another cry for help to save our Earth. Congratulations. Uh, one picture, please. One picture. So thank you very much. Maybe you can take the microphone for yes. a little small talk. Congratulations, though. So, yeah. Sorry, uh, but my English is uh, not good. Yeah, great. That's great. So, so um, as I have Deutsch, then the Fragen in English. Yes, okay, okay. So, I'm sorry. Um, so, many are betting on innovation and new technology um, development. Do you think will that save us? Sicuramente. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Queste che vediamo qui sono delle possibili soluzioni, magari non tutte eh, potranno essere diciamo, delle soluzioni che poi traguardano verso il Green Deal, però quello che, che abbiamo visto in questo percorso è sicuramente che c'è un'imprenditorialità un che... Sì, esatto. Yeah, okay. Uh, these are, uh, he wanted with his work to show uh, some of the possible solutions to, to, for this transition, uh, and maybe at least some of them uh, may help, uh, uh, especially those that are shown in this uh, screenshot, uh, can help the world to, to tra for this uh, transition. We start uh, and, uh, the, the work uh, of Iceland, which is a sort of it's a small country, but it's also like a best practice example because they were really uh, they, they succeeded in transitioning uh, toward the, the uh, full energy uh, power. Uh, and, and so, yeah, <laughs> so, so probably this, uh, let's say, some of this can help, of course, for, for uh, this, this solution. <laughs> ja, also das sind Möglichkeiten, wie wir Transformation gestalten können, regenerative Energie. Ich glaube, in Island war das hier, ähm, also an einigen Orten ist es einfach schon sehr weit. So, ähm, also ähm, 
in one picture is this one. I think I think it looks like in Star Wars in the scene uh, where, where, where Luke Skywalker and, and Darth Vader where they fight in the end and Luke drops down in the, in the round hall. So but to say that um, science fiction movies are inspire um, um, the, the research and maybe it is like you have to visualize the future to create it. Is that maybe what the pictures can yeah. do help us to understand what happens? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry, I'm replying. Yeah, well, it's very long. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Sure. I'm very long. I'm so sorry. I've been maybe just the last part. Maybe just the last part. Yeah, uh, so. <laughs> I'm, I've been involved in the EDMO with this project. <laughs> I'm, I'm directly, I'm directly, I'm directly, I'm with, uh, with Simone uh, supporting the translation. <laughs> so you've been there too. Uh, yes. yes. So this one you were referring to uh, is a big research pro project uh, in the south of France that is. Uh, uh, researching on nuclear fusion, uh, so it's, it's a new form of energy. Uh, let's say we try to emulate what happens in the sun, so the the, the fusion. Uh, okay, but I yes. don't know what in the translation. Uh, maybe another interesting thing is, is that I think his visual style uh, wanted exactly to communicate with, uh, this sense of future of science fiction that you were referring to. So it's interesting that you can see, you, you could actually uh, say, perceive this, uh, this sense because I think that also was his intention. Okay. Also, ich habe alles richtig gemacht. Es sollte nämlich auch ähm, tatsächlich die Ästhetik von Science Fiction auch aufgreifen, die Bilder. So the idea is to pick up the aesthetics of uh, uh, science fiction and there is this association with Star Wars film. Films and through the, seeing these images, the aesthetics, maybe you create attention and maybe you give people an idea what the future could look like. Do you think that there are a next um, solar panels on the Pantheon in Rome, or um, do we uh, do the 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 um, do it change visually or our world? Or wine students around the Colosseum? Probably is not a good example as well for taking uh, uh, the, the, the people who need the knowledge and for accepting the knowledge and uh, uh, is not the best example. So probably uh, one good picture of Copenhagen uh, to try to complete the route to show the integration between uh, the local population and the here you see the Copenhagen, the wind park, and, and so it's much more normal uh, to have such a combination of uh, future. And in Italy, it's harder harder to accept change. But maybe there are um, solar panels on Vatican roofs, but you can't uh, take any uh, images there with drones, and that's why they don't know for sure. Okay, so if, if it's called an, a lens, an objective, what you see as uh, what you have need as a photographer, but it's not what you show, it's not objective, because uh, it's ob an objective image to depict an objective image as a, is, is impossible as a journalist or photographer. We, we both know it, but it must be our aim to come to as close to the truth as possible. And 
and of course, when we have photographers, they need a good lens for this. And now we look at the category photojournalism. The nominees for the Photo Award 2023 are Mustafa Bilgesatkin from Turkey. He his work is to tell the story of the people from the town of Savan Cave on the Tigris. They were forced to leave their home because the state wants to build a dam there. The, without taking any consideration to the culture, the people and the culture of this place. This is the, uh, one of the oldest continuously, in, continuously inhabited settlements of the world. Uh, the rock fortress and its many faiths has existed for 12,000 years, and now it should be flooded. Kaspar Matik from Bern presents his work, Fuck the Cancer, a very impressive and moving documentation of his wife who had breast cancer. We see how the disease inscribes itself in her body, scars develop, her hair falls out. And when there's such a diagnosis, everything suddenly comes to a standstill. And when it's over, normality slowly returns. It, this also goes on at some point. Everything goes on. DOCS is a collective from five of five photojournalists. Ingman Jan Nolting is one of them. Um, they are submitted documentaries about the effects of the flooded disaster at the Artal Valley in July 2021. Small rivers and streams turned into huge flood waves <laughs> due to all the rain and sweeping away in, in hours, houses, cars and people. The DOCS collective took different perspectives, sometimes close up, sometimes the view from a was gives a very comprehensive impression of the flood aftermath. Chloe Sharov of France gives us a glimpse into the atrocities of the Russian war of aggression on Ukraine. It's very hard to bear these pictures and to look at these pictures, but it's necessary to realize what terrible war crimes the Russians are committing, not only in Butcher. Chloe Sharov was driving along the E-40 highway in Ukraine, and that road was lined with burnt out cars and dead bodies. They had probably been trying to escape the war, but the war has already ended. They killed thousands of civilians. The Belgian photographer Alan Schroeder shows us the more I kids in Bangkok. We could hardly be any harder what these boys take out and take in and dish out. The children are sent to Thai boxing at the age of six because the family hopes that they will not end up on the streets as drug dealers or sex workers and that they will earn money for the family instead. The pressure to live up to this expectation is enormous and only some of them actually become champions. But the hope of becoming a champion is perhaps their driving force and it makes them tough anyway. So these are the nominees in the category of photojournalism. Michael Danemann, who won? The winner in the category of photojournalism is Alain Schröder with his work Muay Thai Kids. The jury says on this, with his impressive photojournalistic work, My Thai Kids, Alain Schröder shows us a world of boxing that is completely foreign to us in our Western world. These are intense, powerful photos that manage to showcase the incredible energy of the children. Boxing is more than a sport for them. It is existential. We ask ourselves, as fascinated observers of these scenes, are we not also complicit in the very exploitation that we actually want to criticize? The answer is no. These photographs must exist for the world to know about them. Moreover, they are respectful shots towards the subjects. They are painful to look at, but they also speak of the mental strength of these children. For this strong and impressive work, we would uh, like to express our thanks to Alain Schroeder, who is unfortunately unable to come today. He's always uh, traveling an awful lot uh, with his camera. Today, he's not able to come. Um, so uh, in 2017, he won an award. Um, it's very interesting that he has uh, managed this again, he was a sports photographer in the 80s. You can see that in his work on the Muay Thai kids. Um, we um, took a, a video interview with him beforehand. I'll tell about it. 
Yes, thank you very much. It's uh, indeed amazing to uh, have received this award the second time. So I'm really pleased. And uh, the story I submitted is uh, called Muay Thai Kids. So it's about uh, Thai kids who are doing the national sports called Muay Thai. And uh, uh, they start, in fact, at a very young age, between five and six years old. And the concept is uh, it's not only sports. They want to, uh, to really fight. Uh, to win prizes and win money to support the family, because it's uh, really deep and grave in culture, in Thai culture, that kids have to support the elderly or the families. So uh, that's very important for them. And at the same time, it's uh, one way to uh, escape the poverty, because uh, in the region I was shooting, Isan, uh, it's one of the poorest um, let's say, province of uh, Thailand. So it's a chance for those kids to uh, to become rich uh, one day or to escape uh, their conditions. Yes, we have seen the press pictures. The Muay Thai boxing seems very brutal. How big are the injuries that the children suffer? And how do the Thai people feel about the boxing matches? Are there efforts to ban them? You know, starting at the age of... Uh, 9, 10, and 12, 14, uh, they become really strong uh, with a lot of technique. And so at that age, it can be a problem because uh, they really fight hard. And, uh, you know, sometimes there are some accidents. So I know that, like, local activists try to uh, uh, to have a law to prohibit uh, uh, fights at a very young age. But, uh, so it's still... You know, it's totally engraved in the, in the, their culture, so it, it will take time to, to change. Yes, what is planned next? What projects can we look forward to? What is planned next? What projects? Well, I don't know, because uh, the reason why I couldn't come is uh, because I'm in New York here, and uh, for family reasons, I cannot travel as much as I used to, so I have no... Uh, no plans, so I. It's really day by day. So I, I honestly, I don't know. Großer Freiheit, was alle. So freedom that Alan Schiller lives through. He can couldn't be here. He talked us told us a little bit about the Muay Thai kids and that it, their life is really part of their culture and that this will continue in future to happen, even though there are lots of injuries maybe in the future. But um, despite some activists, this shouldn't change. Thank you very much. I don't know how we'll go on because we just we could not have, take a photo with, with the uh, winner of the award. I think we'll do it later because he will come to Osnabrück later in some weeks and that's when we can uh, give him the prize and, and take a photo. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much here. And these were the awards of the Felix Schiller Award 2023. Yeah, now we will come to a further very special prize, the German Peace Prize for Photography. I don't need to explain to anybody why the prize is especially here more than uh, more important than ever. It's been awarded for the third time. And when it started, nobody could imagine what would happen in 2023 that we would have a war in Europe. And this war, I have to say it, showed us how complicated this thing peace is. What is peace? What does it mean? Is it self-determination, freedom? And who determines by what means peace may be achieved? It is not easy uh, for reporters and photographers, photojournalists to report about a war from uh, the basis of a crisis era or war area. The situation is often unclear and war parties try to spread fake information, of course. They try to spread um, propaganda. This is a really uh, popular uh, instrument of war. That's why it's difficult to get an overview of what's going on. But it's incredibly important that these people try to do this, that they are on site 
and try to find the truth and get as close to it as possible. Stefan Schwarzkopf was in Ukraine as a reporter uh, even before the war of aggression started. Uh, he, so he, he was able to document the escalation and then he was live on site when the war started and he reported about it. And um, so he was very close to events, but always with the aim to be stay objective and for his work. And he was nominated for the German Peace Prize of, for Clarity. And that's why I'm so happy that he's here today and that he can tell us something about his work. Here's Stefan, Stefan Schwarzkopf for you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I am here to talk to you about the topic of peace how you can achieve peace. I have to say to all of you uh, that I am going to disappoint you right from the beginning. A uh, clear template for achieving peace in Ukraine, in the Near East, or Sudan, for example, it's not possible for me to provide such a thing. If I had such a recipe, I wouldn't be here with you. I would be uh, at the negotiating table in Moscow or in uh, Kiev, perhaps, or in New York, I will be General Secretary of the UN and presenting plans there. But um, I would like to share my thoughts, nevertheless, with you here today. Peace is fundamentally very simple. Nobody um, fights anybody else. You leave people in peace. But uh, in preparation for this evening, I thought about the definition of peace and I looked up some definitions. There is negative peace, the absence of um, violence, and there is positive peace, social justice and positive things. Peace, quietness, calmness, or um, good re international relationships. And then, of course, the question arises, particularly in the current time, about when and under what circumstances is peace acceptable at all? Since begin the of the since the beginning of the Russian attack on um, uh, Ukraine, I was nearby in on the twenty fourth of February, and my cameraman and I saw the 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 missiles flying in there. I spent a considerable amount of periods there. I was there most recently in February and March, and in a good week's time, I'll be going there as well. There in the eastern Ukraine, we uh, 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 accompanied a military chaplain. I have a photo of him here. We were near Bakhmut, still the um, center of fighting in Ukraine was almost a surreal atmosphere there at the beginning of February. It was snowing, our boots sunk into the snow. There were lots of bombed out buildings covered in a white cladding. But then uh, there was what we heard and then later on we actually saw with our own eyes. We were early, there early in the morning and heard the artillery increasingly uh, rapidly, um, only sometimes just a few uh, meters or kilometers uh, away from us, and sometimes hundreds of kilometers away. Some of uh, these uh, people were driving out at breakneck speed with injured persons, sometimes with uh, dead bodies. We often had to look for cover. We uh, could only run across any crossings uh, because we were near the uh, um, Russian snipers. Mark, the priest, the young man uh, of 25 years old, he, of course, he would like uh, peace, but not peace at any price. He would like his people, the Ukrainians, to be able to live in peace and in freedom, in freedom in their country and on, on their land. And this is why he is uh, traveling around in his full military outfits. 
he goes to the units who are working uh, at, on the front at so-called uh, zero line. He prays with them. Mark, I asked him, what do you say to these men fighting on the front? I don't say to them, God will protect you, nothing will happen. I say to them, it's possible you might die in the next hours. You might not leave this place with your alive, but God will have a place for you because you are fighting for peace. Whether uh, I asked Mark if he himself would kill another person, and he said immediately, naturally, of course. Uh, just to give land to, to Russia, to make uh, concessions simply for the sake of peace is not an alternative for him. And uh, another person we met was an elderly lady whose house had been hit by uh, a missile the night before. And um, however, she said that's not uh, with tears that she hears about a close person who has died on the front, uh, she's proud of this. And um, she thinks uh, with, with great um, pride in the fighting that her son did for his country. And then she thanked us journalists that we are there that we are reporting about the world, that we are showing the world what is happening. And in this, she didn't mean me as a reporter particularly. She was especially um, meaning the photographers, uh, the photographers who are producing the pictures. No word or no, no sentence which I write is as, expresses as much as the photos. When we from television are, are traveling, we are often a team, there's a reporter, there's a cameraman, there's a so-called fixer, there's a, uni, a Ukrainian journalist who helps us from a language point of view, but also from contacts point of view, police with various interesting people for us. There's also a security person, the phot photographers who we meet are often uh, individual persons really near the front by themselves, often as freelance persons without a whole um, a publication behind them. Uh, this uh, requires a lot of good feeling, a lot of intuition to make the right decision at the right time. Their pictures show the full horror of the war, and they have an effect on all sorts of things, also on political uh, decisions, like uh, supply of weapons, for example, and of political efforts to achieve peace. I uh, would cite Vladimir Zelensky, um, the uh, Ukrainian president who will be in Berlin at the weekend, uh, he says, we want our partners to supply us with the weapons that we need, missiles which fly further, more artillery. The more we are supported, the faster the, uh, we'll be able to re-achieve what is most important in Ukraine and in Europe, peace. But of course, we all know that no conflict can be solved exclusively with weapons. All conflicts have to be uh, concluded at the negotiating table. I don't want to cite here all the countries which would have to be involved. Uh, China, Tur Turkey, will they have a key role in this? And peace always goes, peace uh, go, always goes hand in hand with uh, freedom. It's not a question of coming uh, straight from holiday or whatever. You might notice that I'm a bit suntanned. This is because I've just come from Lampedusa. We have seen how many thousands of uh, refugees land there or are rescued uh, from the sea. We also have seen how in the early morning, 
uh, bodies, dead bodies, are brought onto the beaches. And this every single day when we were there, the uh, town's cemetery has become far too small. There's no space for any further graves. We talked with survivors, a 19-year-old man from Cameroon, his name is Saha. He told us it took him three and a half months to get from his home to the Libyan coast. And not everyone from his group actually got it there as far. Or someone uh, who had worked in Tunisia as a, a guest worker, but he'd been um, discriminated against there on account of his skin color. And now he wanted to get to Germany and live there in freedom and in peace. I always admired people who uh, are, are prepared to give everything, including their own life, for peace and freedom for all of us. I experienced this during the Arabian Spring phase, also in Libya, in Tunisia, in uh, Cairo. I also experienced this. The military leadership had um, uh, take, had, had uh, violently removed the Muslim Brotherhood because he wanted justice. There were hundreds of persons killed. And then there was the Friday. I remember very well, it was a brutally hot day and the people went to the mosque. And for the first time for days, there was calm on the streets, but that uh, was suddenly changed when members of the Muslim Brotherhood came out and onto the big square and thousands of them to protest. And it was clear that the military were not going to allow this. It didn't take long until the first military helicopters were flying overhead and uh, armed tanks were moving in. Uh, my uh, colleague and I made a few interviews very quickly. I asked a 25-year-old man why he didn't go home and look get into safety. He asked with a counter question, why should I? They've already taken my freedom. They've taken away my right to elect the government I would like to elect. If they want to take my uh, life, then they should try. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to fight. Suddenly, there were some shots. At first, we thought warning shots, but then the first demonstrators collapsed, bleeding in front of us. My cameraman and I, and another photo photographer, went into a house entry uh, to be protected and to try continuing watching and taking photographs. Many people died, many people were injured, people were hit by bullets. After an hour, the worst seemed to have passed, and we went to a nearby mosque. There, there were um, the wounded and also the dead had been brought there. And something I didn't expect, the man who I talked to at the doorway didn't tell us to go away or anything as I had actually expected. He was there and he said, come on, come on in, take pictures, show the world what we have here. My, ladies and gentlemen, everything I'm telling you here today, these are personal experiences. They are individual fates and destinies, but perhaps more than ever, it's a time now um, to uh, talk with these individual persons and to listen to them not to ignore their personal stories, what, but to take seriously what they have to say, and then to um, anticipate, to try and work with a certain foresight. A uh, conflict which seems to be a long way away can suddenly hit us tomorrow. Um, climate problems, uh, droughts, um, dreadful political regimes, Everything can be thousands of kilometers away, but uh, can suddenly arrive and change things and affect things in front of our own homes. Peace is only achievable 
if uh, representatives of government look, not if they look away. And this is why the work of journalists and uh, photographers is so fundamentally important. Their pictures, their reports remind people the in responsibility, politicians, what their job is to do everything poss possible to achieve peace amongst each other nationally and internationally. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefan Schwarzkopf. This was very moving what you said. And, uh, and I think it's very strong because in some situations like this, I think we feel helpless when when we are subjected to this. And so this is, you must have been very strong to carry on and to, to, to survive and to live through such moments and to uh, see that moment where people ask you, beg you to, to report on this. And, we just heard, we just widened our view into the world uh, with your presentation. The war in Ukraine is dramatic and, and, and very close, but it's not the only conflict, the only crisis, the only war. But uh, in Yemen, Lagos and on the Mediterranean Sea, people are fighting every day for their lives. And now we will show you the nominees for this year for the German Peace Prize for Photography in 2023. The Dissertor of Photo Artist Alyosha visited special needs schools and neurological care facilities in Ukraine. The people there are particularly in need of help and protection. Alyosha uh, brought transparent biophotoristic forms with him. It was not so easy to transport him through the war zone past many checkpoints and minefields. His goal was to convey a sign of hope, kindness and relief from suffering to the people in need of care. Yagazi Mizi comes from Lagos, Nigeria. In her home country, there's a tradition called Tales by the Moonlight. For this, the old people gather around a fire in the evening and tell the children stories from the past. Mizi herself grew up with these stories, but also with European fairy tales. In her work, Another Tale by the Moonlight, she brings together these two fairy tale cultures and adds the current social political re realities in Nigeria. In the end, it's a question of interpretive sovereignty. Whose fairy tales are told and how? Sebastian Fels is a German photographer. He is an Italian um, fashion photographer. No, Ukrainian fashion photographer. The most, when Kiev figures in April, May 22, taking portraits of young people on the street, the young people are in a phase of life in which a lot is about finding identity in forms of expression and also they're in their fashion and suddenly their own lives and those of their family friends as friends. Cesar Desfuli comes from Spain and he's portrayed 118 people who were rescued from a rubber dinghy in the Mediterranean Sea on 1st of August 2016. They were very lucky for the time being. Cesar Desfuli photographed them shortly after they were rescued. He wanted to give them a face and a name to the human catastrophe taking place in the Mediterranean. And six years ago, after that, he went back to see them, portrayed them again. Not all of them, but some. Mattia Valati is an Italian photographer. He submitted a work that deals with the situation in Yemen. There's been war for eight years. It's one of the biggest humanitarian catastrophe in the world. But as you can see here, the people are re now reclaiming, slowly reclaiming the destroyed public again. Uh, the beauty of On the Brink of War is the name of his work. It's hard to say, but the pictures are once again extremely beautiful. So these are the nominees of the German Peace Press for Photography in 2023, the 375th anniversary of the Peace of Australia. To celebrate it here in the city of Peace Osnabrück. And now I would like the chairman, Michael Dannemann and Felix Schellers, CEO of Hans Christoph Gallenkamp, to announce the winner of the prize.
the German uh, Pri Peace Prize for Photography 2023 is awarded to Sebastian Wells and Svevolod uh, Kazarin, young people photographed in Kiev, April and May 2022. Svevolod Kazarin was not able to leave the country, uh, so he's um, here uh, on the screen. But first of all, we're going to hear the uh, statement by the jury. Sebastian Vels and Svevolod Kazarin, young people photographed in Kiev, they are not hiding. Young men and women stand next to camouflage nets, sit on tank barriers, lean against rocket fragments. Svevolod Kazarin and Sebastian Bells are close to their generation in Kiev, present artists in their cooperation project and make civilians visible as self-confident citizens of their city. On the one hand, the shock of the invasion speaks from their faces, but on the other hand, above all, the determination and resilience they show in the face of the threat. They are documents of the emancipation of a courageous young generation that wants to defend the freedoms and rights it has won. They make clear how much freedom and peace belong together, show how much both are endangered and how much both have to be fought for. So we would now like to congratulate Sebastian Sveld and Svevolod Kazarin. First of all, a photo. Can we manage it with the screen and the several uh, in the background? I don't know if it's possible. Um, maybe we can. Well, he's he's part of it, so let's. That's better than nothing. There he is. Or perhaps we can do it if you go there a little bit, uh, Mr. Gallenkamp. Mrs. Neumann. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. As we see, Svevolod is uh, here. Thank you, everyone. It's uh, really cool to. I'm fine. Uh, and, uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Although, like 30 minutes ago, there was, there was an attack on Kiev. Uh, drones, but uh, they were hit by other systems. So it's uh, okay now. And, Okay, so are you afraid or how can you prepare the, yourself in this, in this situation? Yes, yes, because... Yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, people are really, uh, like, are really used to this, so... Uh, like there, there is a yard and there is a football field. And uh, when I was counting the explosions, and I counted around 10 or 15 explosions, the kids there were still playing football and they didn't care at all. And I think that um, at this point, uh, people from Ukraine, they are just yeah. that, that we are not really reacting. It's, of course, dangerous, but they, they, we need to uh, keep okay. scoring and Trial, keep the Please. Um, Sebastian, you were also there just after the war started in 2022. What can you tell us? You have to focus on young people. 
what can you tell us well, how they handled the situation? In, in what way is, was it important for you to show young people? Several said, said it very, uh, very well with the playing children. So the drones were in the sky and they were shot uh, and hit and the children were playing at the same time. It's, it's not about not caring or uh, the, the children didn't care about the drones. They said it so easily, but it's about not to hide. That's what you said, Michael. It's, we were looking for people who didn't hide, who wouldn't hide, no matter what. Who want peace, not a peace at, at all cost, but uh, they want a peace together with freedom. And, and so we as a young generation in Ukraine and Germany and perhaps in the rest of the rest of Europe, we are of the same opinion. So we, this is a fashion photographer. And I think some people may say, uh, in what way is fashion important in such a situation where people are dying? And, but why is it important for the people, especially the, here, to, to express themselves this way? Fashion is one of the best possibilities to show yourself on the street and to show that you have your self-confidence, that you're not afraid, that you're not hiding. And Savlod is not only a fashion photographer. Last year, he was in Kiev. There was a magazine, um, a Ukraine-German art magazine uh, he founded. Uh, and so we, we do much more than taking photographs and fashion photographs. We do a lot of work there. How did you get to know each other? We met via social media in Kiev at the end of April 2022, when I was in Kiev. And the city was completely empty after the north had, had just been freed from the Russians. And I was looking, desperately looking for young people with, with whom I could think, what could I do with the cameras, photographer? And if I hadn't met Savalot, I think I wouldn't have taken any photograph because nobody would have given me a chance. I would have just have gone home. And that's the reason. So thank you very much. Your pictures will be seen also good. Uh, on the way from the railway station to the hotel, I saw images. What 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 kind of feeling is it when you see them? That these and this is a beautiful feeling. That is that you can see these young people here, and that these uh, young people are connected to this important word peace a word that was abused very much in the past year. There were big transparencies with, uh, with the Russian word peace. And I think that the, the, what is the context there? So we haven't got an answer what we can do with peace, but maybe these images uh, are a contribution to stay on course for peace. And I think that's what want to do, we do together. That's what we wanted to, to do together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just uh, this award has uh, uh, 10,000 euros. What, what is it? What are your plans? What do you want to do with this money? How do you have any new projects you want to do? Um, well, I was traveled a lot to you, Ukraine last year, and I financed this from my own money and from and my own risk. So, and uh, this is why I'm very grateful for every cent that uh, comes back to me uh, to carry on with such work, uh, because this this job isn't paid at all, and so I I need every penny for this. And I think uh, Sarah is uh, equally grateful for this money because he needed an operation or he will need an operation. And uh, 
and in health insurance in Ukraine is not health insurance in Germany, and so he will need the money for his operation. So that's a good investment. Good investment. Yeah, thank you, Devola Kazarin. Thank you, and all the best for you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you thank very you much, and thank you, Sebastian Well, thank you for your work, and so we're working like this. Thank you very, very much. So thank you. Uh, of course, everybody is leaving stage. Thank you very much for the come for this peace, this prize, and also thank you very much to the city of Osnabrück for the German peace prize photography, and thank you very much to the jury and to all jury members who have come here today. So that's it with the German peace prize for photography and the Felix Scheller Award in four categories, and. Now I would like Nitz Ale Kessen once again to come back to stage. He will be able to see these images in an exhibition and he will open it officially. So here and now we have just come to an end, at least the end of the program uh, organized for this evening. First of all, thank you very much. Uh, Anja Backhaus, thank you so much for your lively moderation this evening. And I hope that you, dear guests, can also take away as much inspiration and stimulation from the words and thoughts on the photographs and the awards as I have. So it now remains for me to uh, open the exhibition. I would like to combine with a big thank you to my team here in the museum's quartier. I would like to uh, thank uh, Alexandro Pedemodanios and Dieter Tröschel, Andreas Röschmann, uh, uh, Claudia Drexler uh, for the press, Bastian Lenzen and the team um, working together with Mr. Schumann. Uh, thank you very much for all your contribution. Uh, this is so important to have an audience for all these uh, photographs. Uh, the pictures we've all heard so much about this evening can be found in the Oberlichtsaal of the museum. We are all going to go there together now in a moment. Uh, my special tip for you, Sebastian Wells has talked about it, uh, at uh, the museum shop, there is the uh, magazine produced by the uh, prize winner of the uh, Peace Prize for Photography. Um, we have a number of uh, copies there. You should make sure you get one. They're available on a first come, first serve basis. So also then on a more sort of down to earth basis, um, in the basement of the museum, we have some uh, food and uh, snacks. And uh, in the foyer, there are drinks available, made available. And thank you for this by Felix Schuller. Now I wish you uh, great encounters with the photographs. Thank you very much.